for that, Theo. Um, a domain name registry often has a thankless job. As Uniforum, we have long since accepted that we cannot satisfy everyone all the time. For some, policy change and innovation is a welcome achievement. <clears throat> For others, it presents an inconvenient ex expense and disruption to their business. <clears throat> domain name, being a domain name registry means that we need to make tough decisions sometimes. <clears throat> and we need to try and uphold what is in the best interest of the CO.za namespace. In doing this, we, have also, we must also be conscious of the larger interests of South Africa as a whole, as CO.za has grown to be an integral uh, and daily part of our commercial and social lives. <clears throat> Another important aspect of being a domain name registry is that we are expected to provide leadership in terms of the developing the local and regional DNS and to promote innovation. By networking with our international peers and participating in international forums, we are constantly aware of the global DNS and the technical path that it will follow in supporting the internet. It is, not, it is not only our responsibility to understand this innovation, it is also our responsibility to ensure that South Africa is not left behind. In doing this, we must provide leadership by enabling and promoting innovative growth for the local and regional DNS. Other than trying to keep abreast of international developments, we have also to contend with our own unique set of circumstances and challenges in South Africa, largely brought about by the promulgation of the ECT Act. Technical innovation in the CO.za domain name space has been hampered by regulatory uncertainty and procrastination, but thankfully the situation has improved dramatically, led primarily by a commitment we made two years ago in consultation with ESPA and the ZA Domain Name Authority to set Sierra Zere on a course of fundamental structural change. Two years ago, we started the ball rolling on a process that will place South Africa as an equal, if not a leader, amongst its international peers. Today, we are proud to claim that we have implemented a fully authoritative EPP registry solution for Sierra Zere. This achievement is further crowned by the fact that we have managed to seamlessly integrate our legacy systems with the new registry systems thus allowing us to provide further options for our customers and partners. We are confident that the benefits of the system will soon be widely appreciated by uh, South African registrars, and we are in the, they are in the process of integrating with this EPP registry system, which is based on international best standards. Oh, sorry. The... Past in terms of CO.za, uh, the CO.za system relied largely on an email-based system which was based in plain text. Um, it included operations such as news, updates, and deletes. Uh, we did some basic um, checking on that system in terms of name server requirements, uh, which was really the only hurdle to, um, to registering a CO.za domain name. The system was based on a post-payment process, so you could effectively register an operational and working CO.za domain name and only pay for it at a later time, which is fairly unique in the world. Uh, we, we, know we haven't really come across that before. It was an easy-to-use system. It was also an easy-to-abuse system, and we had a, to do a lot of policy implementation and enforcement post the fact, and uh, that really took up a lot of our resources is, in terms of managing um, the abuse of the system. And the most fundamental about the, the, the past system that we had is that we had no formal relationship with registrars. Registrars were seen as agents of the registrant, and essentially we had a relationship with the registrant or the end user. Some of the performance steps on the legacy system were that you could register a domain name in a couple of minutes, but it could take up to five days, depending on name server checks. Same for updates and deletes. I mean, they took quite a bit of time depending on the checks that we had to implement. <clears throat> Today, with the implementation of our new EPP system, which stands for Extensible Provisioning Protocol, we, are able to, we were able to separate the registry component of our legacy system out of the, the legacy system into a new self-sustained EPP interface and registry system, which currently provides, which is currently authoritative for CO.za. 
We've also allowed our legacy interface, our email interface, to integrate with that EPP system so that we can provide further options to our customers. Um, the EPP system went live in, uh, went authoritative at least, in March 2011, which effectively meant that our legacy system was interacting on an EPP basis with the registry. We made the Who is a service uh, live in, at the end of July 2011, so all Who is services were rendered from the EPP system. The zone, or the publishing of the zone, went authoritative in August 2011, so we were publishing the zone from the new EPP system. Uh, and we e uh, included external registrars, new accredited registrars, onto the system in early September. And um, the first act of uh, testing for RAS started in mid-September. So our, our plan for tomorrow or in the future is that we're going to be accrediting many more registrars in order for them to interface directly with our EPP system. Um, and in order to do that, we need to establish uh, technical accreditation criteria for these registrars. We need to conclude accreditation agreements, terms of reference with them. We need to, un we need to uh, enhance and um, uh, make available our published policies and ensure that our registrars are a fay with these policies. And we need to ensure that our registrars are able to manage the registrant relationship effectively as well as managing the reseller market. Excuse me, I'm just waiting for this one. Beyond tomorrow, Uniform is gearing itself uh, for, its for its important role uh, in the central registry. I believe you heard yesterday from the chairman of the ZA Domain Name Authority that Uniform is very involved in the, in the establishment of central registry. And we believe that the system that we've implemented, the EPP system, will play a pivotal role in the running and administration of that central registry. And we're certainly looking forward to adding further second-level domains onto that system if they come, uh, if, if we are fortunate to have that. We're also looking at promoting and pushing the technology that we've developed for the benefit of, uh, of CCTLD administrators in Africa. And hopefully, with any luck, we will also be able to introduce one or two new GTLDs onto that check technology as well. Some quick stats on the uh, EPP system for August. Um, we've had just under 20,000 domain creates, just under 10,000 deletes, and uh, over 25,000 updates during that period, which was the first um, month that we uh, were fully operative with uh, uh, the legacy system. Some performance statistics there, uh, you could see that the average create is 59 milliseconds, average delete 53, and update 51. So really on par with international standards and best practices. What I'd like to do now is hand over to Theo quickly. We're going to try and do a demonstration of a, of a, a create on the new system, which will be one of the first creates uh, that we're we're trying to do, um, which we only really enabled yesterday. There, if I'm not in fact wrong. No, since the beginning of this week. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to try and do, guys, is um, as Neil mentioned, uh, uh, the system is live. We have two registrars on the system. The one registrar being the legacy registrar, which is Uniform, which does exactly the same, which interfaces to the system in exactly the same way as the external registrars will be uh, connecting to our system. Now, the, the, one of the guys, uh, one of the uh, uh, organizations, an ISPA member as well, has been with us on this long road right from the start. And uh, that is uh, Wayne, Wayne Diamond from Diamatrix. They are the first registrar which is um, interfacing to our live system. So what I'm going to ask is, uh, and I can't, I'm not too sure if I can see it over here, is for us to bring up a web browser. And um, what uh, the web browser shows is that uh, we, uh, we have a particular domain who is query for a domain called domain-epp-123. So what I'm going to do now, in fact, what you can see over here is a who is query. The who is query show that the domain isn't registered. So what I'm going to ask Wayne to do uh, in this demonstration is to see if he can register it from right from where he's sitting from their registrar system which they've developed themselves. Okay. <laughs> now, please bear with us, folks. 
Okay. Effectively, what, what Wayne is showing is that they are interfacing to the registry in exactly the same way that Uniforum, uh, the legacy system, is interfacing to the registry. Um, just to let you know, um, the, for the new registrars, the registrars will be registering domains on a, um, an upfront payment basis. The legacy registrar, however, will continue operating in the way that it is uh, with a post-payment system. We won't change that, um, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, so what our system does and what our system is able to do is to run multiple concurrent policies. We have a policy for the new registrars and we have, unfortunately, uh, uh, we have a legacy system which we have to maintain, which a lot of people out here are using. We can't just take it away. We have a different policy for that, and, and the, two, the, the two systems run side by side, effectively on the, on the same software. So just stick your hand up when you're ready, Wayne. Okay. Is your hand up? Cool. Uh, Dave, would you like to hit the refresh button over there and let's see what we get? Okay, there we go, guys. The domain has been registered. Now, you're going to see a couple of things that are different over here um, in terms of a normal who is query. You'll see a whole lot of information um, that is no longer there, okay? What you're seeing on the system is the registry information. You'll see the name of the domain. You'll see the name of the registrar. Um, we'll show you another domain just now, and you'll see that the name of that registrar, um, in this case, is Diamatrix, but for all the other domains is Uniforum. And as new registrars become accredited, uh, their name will appear over there directly as the registrar. What you also see is the registrant postal address, the registrant contact details, um, and uh, the registrant um, email address. Those are the, that is the information. That is all the information that the registry will maintain. The registrant, uh, the, regist the further registrant details, further technical details, further admin details, those are all within the domain of the, registra of the registrar. They don't belong to the registry. And that is the reason why for Diametrix you won't see that information. What you will, however, also see are the, uh, the names of the, of the name servers. So, yes, what you, what you actually see over here is very simple, it's very easy, but I can tell you that there's a huge amount of work um, that has taken place both from Diametrix's side and from our side, and um, I'm really, really proud to say that this was developed um, entirely in South Africa with South African skills. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's our system. That's our demonstration. Thank you very much. Got anything further to say? Okay. And I think that's it, guys, for our demonstration. We're running, we've got uh, five minutes left. If there's any questions, Neil, please don't run away. I've got something to give to you. And not only do I have something to give to you, but I'm sure some of the delegates have questions for you. <laughs> okay, any questions? Okay. Okay, Neil, I don't know if you want to answer, answer that, or I, I can answer that, it doesn't matter. The process of um, regulating or governing transfers between registrars is regulated in our published policies, which is available on our new registry website. But essentially, the gaining registrar will submit an application for the transfer on the system. Um, there are certain checks and bal balances, verifications that need to take place. They're all done within the EPP system. And uh, if those checks and balances are passed, the domain name is then transferred to the new registrar. There's a slightly different process for transferring <coughs> domain names from the legacy registrar, or the legacy system, onto an EPP registrar. There, the process we will follow is the exact same system you currently have today, the email uh, ticket system. So uh, you will initiate the transfer in the EPP system. Uh, it will then initiate a process within the legacy system to find out whether that that update can be, um, can be uh, authorized. If it is authorized, the, the legacy system then communicates the outcome of that process with the EPP system and the domain is transferred. But it's the sa exactly the same ticket system as, uh, as you currently have with the legacy system. The, there are two systems currently. So the, the legacy system is still a post-payment <coughs> system, uh, so that remains as is. The new EPP system to which accredited registrars will interface is a prepayment system. Um, but the payment terms are uh, slightly better than the, the legacy system. Um, I can't give you final figures at the moment, but it's roughly in the region of 35 rand a domain excluding VAT.
Yes, there's, there's, there are three processes essentially. The, the first process is the accreditation agreement, which is pretty finalized, and you can get a copy of that agreement from the registry website. The second element is technical verification, and there's nothing really that stops anyone at this point in time from participating in the technical accreditation. You essentially get access to a test system, you have to pass certain um, EPP commands, pass those commands onto us, and if you pass it, you really pass your technical verification. You then sign your agreement, and the third process would then be to understand the published policies, to understand actually how the process works from start to finish. It's only the published policies that still need to be updated and finalised to some extent. The rest is available as you know, of, of a few weeks ago already. That's a difficult one. Um, how long is a piece of string answer? Um, the, I think the, the intention from both ourselves and the ZA Domain M Authority is that we phase that system out um, as soon as it is practical. So there will be some policy tightening up on that system. Um, you know, we might change payment terms so from well, the current six months for deletion might come down. We might increase prices on it to encourage people off it. But essentially, at the end of the day, that system could be there in perpetuity depending on the amount of use of, of that system. But it's definitely going to be tightened up. It's not going to be as as a, as a free-for-all as it is at the moment, actually. Uh, our ISPs should actually choose a system and, and, and stick to that one. So it'll be possible to transfer your domains off the old system onto the new system, and you should be using the new system. I wouldn't recommend using you know, both of them, but I suppose as a transitional phase, you could do that. But it's, it's essentially, I, I think the expectation is that ISPs become accredited registrars and have a direct interface through the EPP system just for that transfer? Yes. Um, it, there's really no smarter way of dealing with it at the end of the day. The, we have to deal with the legacy system as an independent separate registrar, and that registrar has to go through its authorization process. And we found that the process that we've submitted and we've put into our published policies for transferring domain names of the legacy system onto the new system is probably the fairest system out of all of them. But once the domain's transferred, you don't need to touch the legacy system anymore. So it's really a one-off effort in terms of getting those names over. At this point in time, the policy is that we won't allow transfers back to the legacy system. Sorry, with that, I'd like to present you... Thank you. With